In this video, I am going to create a .NET Core MVC project, deploy that project to an Azure web app running Windows, and manage the source and deployment of this project through Azure DevOps source control and pipelines. This screencast was made on April 13th, 2021, so if you are watching this much later than that date, it's very possible that something has changed significantly since watching this video. One reason why I'm making this screencast is because much of what I have been looking at related to Azure DevOps is old and doesn't reflect how things look and work now, even things published a year or two ago. So let's jump right in. Here I am at my terminal. I'm in my trash directory, which is where I create sample projects that I'm going to throw away at the end of it. So let's start by creating a new .NET Core project. I'm going to create it in that directory. All right, we now have our project. Let's open it up in Visual Studio Code. So here I am in Visual Studio Code. This is the project that we want to deploy to Azure. So let's open up the views. Let's go in here and at least make one change. Let's get rid of this paragraph and say, hello in Azure. Cool. So now that we've got this, let's add a git ignore because we need to get this into source control. Here's a standard git ignore for .NET Core applications. Now I'm going to create the local repo. Of course, there are no files actually checked in, so let's add them. OK, everything is ready to go. Next step, let's go create our project and repository in Azure DevOps. In my browser, I've already got Azure DevOps and Azure open. We're starting with DevOps, so I'll go here and I'm going to create a new project. I can call it anything I want. I've now created the project. Over here on the left, we will see various things in Azure DevOps. We're going to start with the repository. So come here. I can see here's how I would push an existing repository, which is what I created. So now let's go back to the terminal. Paste that. And now everything should be up in the repository on Azure DevOps. I'm going to refresh. And there's all the code. So we've done everything we need to do to set up a source control here in Azure DevOps. Next, what we want to do is create a web app in Azure. Need to create a new resource group for this. So I'm going to call it Eric resource group. Need to give this a name, Eric Cool Web App. That's what I'll go with. Leave the publish the same, change the runtime stack to .NET 5. We're going to go with Windows. Everything else can stay the same. Create. This could take a little bit of time. We'll wait till it's done. OK, we now have our web app. So let's go take a look at it. So we're here at home. We can go look around. We can go look at our app services. We can see here's Eric Cool Web App. 
So I'm going to choose that. And here's information about it. I can see here's the URL. I've not pushed anything yet, which is correct. No code. And so it's got this default page. We'll want to remember this particular thing because we're going to need the name of the app service in our configuration in a minute. We'll come back to it though. Right now, let's go to Azure DevOps and set us up a little bit more. So here we are back in Azure DevOps, exactly where we were before. If we want to connect what we're doing here to what's going on in Azure, we actually have to create what is called a service connection. So down at the bottom, we can see the settings for our project. Let's go down there. Let's hit the back button here. And this gets us to all of the different project settings. Let's go to service connections. We will create a service connection. Pick Azure Resource Manager. I'm going to go with this. This will base it off of my subscription, like so. I'm going to use the Eric Resource Group, which is the one I just created for my web app. I need to give this a name, New App Connection. We will want to remember this name for the configuration as well. New app connection. So we'll hit save. Takes a bit. And now we have it. We have a new app connection. The next step is to go back to our code and create a build pipeline file. Here I am. I need to create a new file. Azure Pipeline YAML. Here's the contents we want to use. Let's walk through it. At the top it says, for the Azure service agent, we're going to be using a Windows agent. So any commands we give would have to work fine on Windows. And then are followed a number of steps. The first step is to set the .NET Core version. This is a .NET 5 app, so we'll go with that. Next step is to build. Next step is to publish. Then we're going to zip it all up. And then we're actually going to deploy that Azure Web App. Now, here is where those two pieces of configuration come in. So we need to get those values. One of them was new app connection. Now, this says Azure subscription, but this is not looking for your subscription ID. Here we will use this name that we created whenever we created that connection. Now we also need the app name. All right, so now we have the connection name in, we have the app name in. Everything should be configured at this point. So let's actually push this. All right, we've now pushed this pipeline file. We can now go back to Azure DevOps and create a pipeline there. So here we are in Azure DevOps. We're still in the project settings. So we're going to go over here to pipelines to take us out of settings. And we're going to create our first pipeline. Everything is currently stored in Azure Repos Git. Here it is. It's called pushing to Azure. We have an existing Azure Pipelines YAML file checked in. That is the one we just checked in. There it is. We'll choose Continue. This should not be blank, which means I did something wrong. Silly me, it looks like I didn't save any of the contents of the file. So let's do that. Save. And uh, let's push it again.
oops, you know, I'm just going to leave this mistake in here. Fun times. All right, so let's start this pipeline over. Create a pipeline. Just think of this as extra practice. Pushing to Azure, use an existing Azure Pipeline YAML file. There it is. Continue. Look, now we have our contents. Fantastic. All right, so uh, what's next? Well, let's try running it. All right, so we see that our pipeline has been created. And if we scroll down, we can see the job below. So let's choose that. And at this point, it's seen the file because it's got all of our steps and it's going to walk through them one by one. All right, so right now it's setting the .NET Core version. Now it's building. Now it's publishing. Next we'll get the zip, which won't take long. Now it's deploying to Azure. This is the crucial step. All right, it says it successfully deployed the web package to App Service. We'll let this finish and then we'll go actually check it. Okay, everything is done. Here's our, our website. We'll refresh. Hello in Azure. Neat, that worked. I would say first time except for that problem we had with not saving the file. Okay, so now let's go make one more change and push it and see what happens. So here I am back in code. Let's go back to index. All right, and I did save that. Let's push it. There we go, everything's pushed. Let's go back to Azure DevOps. So here we are. Let's go back. Let's actually go back to the root of pipelines and dig back in. So here is the pipeline that we created. Here now is this change that we just made working its way through. We can look at the job. Where are we at? Okay, we are still at the very beginning of the process. So let's, I'll, I'll actually speed through this because it's just not gonna be much fun waiting a couple minutes for this to deploy. Okay, the job is run. It took two minutes, 16 seconds. Let's go check the website. Excellent. Our changes automatically got set up. Now the changes are in production. Sweet. So what did we do? We created an ASP.NET Core MVC app. We deployed it to Azure Web App, running Windows, and we used Azure DevOps to do all of that. I hope you found this helpful.